Freshies! Welcome back to another episode of Learning Mathematics here at DepEd TV. I am Teacher Bell. Ang yung kaduo sa Math 7. This is a new day for fun and exciting learning in mathematics. Together, let's be Math Tibay, Math Talino, and Math Kaling! Starting with today's task, I want you to bring out your pen and self-learning module. Ready? Lo and behold, it's time for us to explore the concept of principal roots and irrational numbers. Using a scientific calculator, input the following and get the equivalent value. Round off your answer to the nearest hundreds. Number 1. Square root of 2. Number 2, square root of 36. Number 3, square root of 64. Number 4, square root of 50. Number 5, square root of 81. And number 6, square root of 75. Timer! Let's check. Square root of 2 is this. If we round it off to the nearest hundreds, that would be 1.41. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 50 is this. 5 square root of 2. If we round it off to the nearest hundreds, that would be 7.07. .07. The square root of 81 is 9. And the square root of 75 is this. 5 square root of 3. If we round it off to the nearest hundreds, that would be 8.66. As you can notice, some square roots resulted to a whole number and some resulted to a decimal. Based on your activity, have you noticed this symbol? We have been using this for quite some time now. Do you know what it is called? That is known as a radical sign. This expression of the radical sign together with the number is called a radical. The number under the radical sign is known as the radicand. In this symbol, there is an invisible number 2 here, which indicates that we are getting the square root of the radicand. This number is known as the index. The index can also be 3, 4, 5, and so on. If our index is 2, no need to write it. Here it is. As you have seen in the table, we have the radical and the radicand. When we get the answer of square root of 2 and square root of 36, that is called the principal root. 
Earlier, you have tried to get the equivalent value of each of the given using a scientific calculator. You have also known that the equivalent value is called principal root. What have you noticed about their principal roots? Notice that some principal roots are whole numbers and others are decimals. It means that when a principal root is a whole number or fraction, then the radical is rational. And when a principal root has non-terminating and non-repeating decimals, these numbers are called irrational numbers. It means that they cannot be expressed as fractions. Here are the terms that we need to remember. The principal root is a number which produces a specific quantity when multiplied by itself. It is the positive nth root of a number. A perfect square is the square of a rational number. Rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero. Irrational number is a number whose decimal representation is neither terminating nor repeating. This number cannot be expressed as a quotient of integers. Let us relate this with the concept of exponent. Finding square roots and converting them to exponents is a relatively common operation in algebra. Square roots, which use the radical symbol, are non-binary operations. Operations which involve just one number that ask you, what number multiplied by itself gives you this number under the radical? Take a look at this example. In the expression 3 squared, 3 is the base, 2 is called the exponent, and we read the expression as 3 squared. When the exponent is 2, we call the process squaring. For example, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. So by this mathematical concept, we can say that the 5 squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. It is important that we can recognize perfect square numbers when working with square roots. When a number is multiplied by itself, the product is a perfect square. Let us take a look at this activity. Determine which of the floating boxes is the square of the given numbers. You can do this by multiplying the given base by itself. You have 30 seconds. Timer! You can do this, Freshies! No pressure. You're doing great! Let's check your answer by pressing it on the calculator. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. And 10 squared is 100. Notice that the products are all perfect square numbers. Since the exponent of each number being is 2, or the number is being multiplied by itself twice, the process of squaring the number will result to a perfect square number. Since you easily learned the concept of rational and irrational principal root, let's have a game! You need two flags, blue 
and red flag. You are going to raise blue flag if the principal route is rational. Otherwise, raise the red flag for irrational principal route. Number 1. Square root of 1. Timer! Raise your answer. The correct answer is... Since we have extracted a rational number, which is 1, therefore, we can say that the principal root of square root of 1 is rational. Number 2. Square root of 64. Timer! Raise your answer. The correct answer is... Since we have extracted a rational number, which is 8, therefore, we can say that the principal root of square root of 64 is rational. Number 3. Square root of 15. Timer! Raise your answer. The correct answer is... Can you think of any number that when multiplied by itself will give an answer of 15? None! We can say then that 15 is not a perfect square. Therefore, the principal root of square root of 15 is irrational. Number 4. Square root of 16 over 25. Timer! Raise your answer. The correct answer is... Since we have extracted a rational number which is 4 over 5, therefore, we can say that the principal root of square root of 16 over 25 is rational. You are really mad, Kaling! You should know how to get the principal root of a given number and memorize the list of perfect square integers. I know you can do it. Now, let's get into finding the two consecutive integers where the square root of a number lies. But, how are we going to determine the two consecutive integers where the square root of a number lies? Let's have an example. Find two consecutive integers in the radical form where square root of 12 lies in between. Think of two consecutive perfect square integers where 12 is in between them. 12 is between the perfect squares 9 and 16. Now, take the square roots of these numbers. Since the principal root of square root of 9 is 3, while the principal root of square root of 16 is 4, thus, Square root of 12 is between 3 and 4. Easy, right? Another example. Find the two consecutive integers where the square root of 40 lies in between. Again, we will think of two consecutive perfect square integers where 40 is in between them. 40 is between the perfect squares 36 and 49. So we have 36 and 49. Take the square roots of these numbers. Since the principal root of square root of 36 is 6, while the principal root of the square root of 49 is 7, thus, the square root of 40 is between 6 and 7. It's your time to answer this. Find the two consecutive integers in radical form where square root of 83 lies in between. Timer! If your answer is between 9 and 10, you got it right! Before we formally end our lesson, let us see how much you've learned from our lesson today. Tell whether the given statement is true or false. Number 1. Estimating is one way to determine 
where the irrational square root of a number lies. Number 2. The square root of 25 is a perfect square. Number 3. The square root of 30 lies between 3 and 4. Number 4. The square root of 119 lies between 10 and 11. And number 5. Only perfect square integers have a square root. Timer! Let us check your word. Since irrational numbers have a square root, which is not a whole number, we can get the square root by estimating. So, the answer is true. Number 2. The square root of 25 is 5. Since 5 is not a perfect square, then the answer is false. Number 3. 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. 30 does not fall between 9 and 16. So its square root is not between 3 and 4. So the answer is false. Number 4. 10 squared is 100 and 11 squared is 121. Since 119 lies between 100 and 121, its square root would fall between 10 and 11. The statement is true. Number 5. Lastly, as you can notice, if we try to get the square root of a number which is not a perfect square on a calculator, there will still be a result. So the last statement is false. I hope that you got it all correctly. Great job! For your assignment, read and answer additional activities found on your self-learning module. That's it for today, but learning does not end here. In our next episode, we are going to learn how to estimate the square root of a number to the nearest hundreds. Again, this is Teacher Bell, Ang Yung Kaduo, sa Math 7. I hope we help you become Math Tibay, Math Talino, and Math Galing! <laughs>